the Vice Chancellor Hindusan University, Mr. Jari Mudumbi of HTC, the Director of Academics, the Registrar, members of the faculty, ladies and gentlemen. I deem it a pleasure to be here today uh, to, on the occasion of the distribution of the Diploma in Cyber Investigation and Laws, especially when I see a colleague sitting out there receiving it, um, and he is somebody with a lot of academic degrees after his name. But if an officer who's as senior as him and who has studied such a lot can come and do this course, then it's very hopeful that the entire department will be taking up this particular course, which would, I guess, help out a lot. I think it was in the year 2007 when one of the multinational companies housed in the OMR came and met me and uh, said that they had a problem, a case they would like us to help them out with. To put it very simply, when the, about a week earlier, when the head of the setup had gone to his office and logged into his computer, logged into their server, what happened was in a space of two minutes, he saw the entire thing falling before his eyes. The entire system had crashed. And then they realized that somebody had mounted a virus attack on them. They did not know whether it was from within or from outside or how it had happened. The principals sitting overseas had also done all the verifications thereafter. And during the course of the week, they were able to boil down to the fact that one of their former employees, it is normally the case, had decided to take his pound of flesh. So first, he had accessed their data base, taken away the firm's list of clients, etc. And after that, introduced a virus that when any one of them gets onto the server, the entire system would crash. Now, they had located the person they had sufficient proof to say that person X had done this. And then the reason they came to us in the police was they needed some action to be taken against him. Action. It wasn't really that they wanted a case. As I said, we will register a case. They said, no, please just call this person and threaten him. I said, uh, we're not supposed to be doing that. As for the IPC, that is an offense. I'm willing to register the case, even based on all the investigation you've done, and go ahead. And then I asked them that when this thing happened, why didn't you come to us? I mean, it's been a week. You've done all the investigation. You've virtually solved the case. And now you've come to us. And uh, then they said, A, we didn't think you had the expertise to do the investigation. And at that time, it was horribly true. We may or may not have been able to solve the case. I thought we could, because we did have a couple of people who, were, uh, who had done the courses with uh, Anna University. But more importantly, they were now coming to us because you needed the physical side of policing. It was rather sad. I said, you people are in the 
you know, the technological world far, far ahead of the rest of us, really, in terms of your thinking, in terms of your day-to-day uh, -day activity, but when you find one bad egg in the whole basket, you come right back to what we talk about ethics, morals and rights and say, catch that guy and give him a bashing. Well, in today's world, we're not supposed to do that. I said, wouldn't we? I would just say that you talked about ethics and values. I'd perhaps go a little bit more technical and say what we really need to teach at school level is respecting the rights of another individual. <coughs> We're all human beings and if we do not respect one another as just that, that we are human beings, we do not re respect the other's right to live and uh, you know, pursue something legitimately, then we really have no right to be standing where we are. Most of our problems are taking place because somebody doesn't respect the other person, doesn't respect their, you know, the dignity of life. So that is something which we really have to bring into our world because what happens is the people sitting at the back can bear me out, but I think you live more in the virtual world than in the actual world. And that is the place where we have to have to respect the dignity of all the other people who live in that world too. Because there's a lot of things that happen there and most of the things aren't very nice either. We talk a lot about cyber security. We talk a lot about what is happening in the cyberspace. And somehow we seem to bundle everything that happens in the cyberspace into a cyber crime. What is really happening is, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but what I feel is what happens is people commit the normal crimes in the cyber world, in the cyberspace, just using technology to do it. In the days of old, somebody might send, start a rumor about a person, you know, make it out that that person is morally or otherwise not all right, and give that person a bad name. Today it's much easier. By the social networking setup, you can ruin a person's character, ensure that he or she is an outcast for life. It's more she than he. Give them a bad name and see that's the end of it all. Earlier, people used to do verifications when they entered into a job. Today, it seems it's only the government which keeps on doing these verifications, physically using paper and pencil, maybe transmitting it online, but however, there is something done using the good old paper and pencil. Whereas most of the private sector just go on to the social network and you know all you require to know about the person you're going to employ. Um, so a lot of damage does keep happening in that area. And if only people could respect another's rights, then I guess we wouldn't have the kind of cases that we see happening. I'm sure during your course, uh, Dr. Shailendra Babu might have told you about a case that he had the misfortune to investigate, where a young, yeah, I use the word misfortune, because a young school student who was appearing for her board exams spent the night before her exams 
in an absolute horror and days because she got phone call after phone call after phone call where people wanted to know when they could take sexual favors from her as they heard that she was available. Fortunately, we had a parent who was sensible and wise and went to the commissioner and sought his uh, help. The person was located immediately. It turned out to be another student and this entire exercise was just because of pure jealousy. Jealousy because the victim was a very good student and this kind of a horror the night before your board exam can do wonders as far as your exam results are concerned. Now this, it's just using technology to get your own back. And the mistake we sometimes do is bunching everything and saying that is a cyber crime. Yeah, it's a cyber crime because the IT Act tells us it is so, but I think we do have to distinguish between the various kinds of cases that are coming up in the cyber world. We've got to know how to tackle it. There's a lot more to it. I mean, you can get uh, the standard email letters saying from a cl uh, close relative or friend saying, I'm stuck somewhere and I need money. That's the simple one. Or you can find yourself being, uh, what shall I say, uh, being pulled into a botnet and that is going to be a lot of problems for you. So what I would really say is we need a lot of people who are educated in the world of cybersecurity who can work in all walks of life educating the rest of the people on how they can be safe in the net, on, in the cyber world. Because it is very, very important that people know what can happen and they know how to keep themselves safe. A very simple thing, and now Facebook's open to under 13. How many people, think about your colleagues, think about your friends, your relatives, how many on the Facebook actually turn on the privacy requirements and say that the whole world cannot access their site. Most of them don't do that. Many don't even bother. And the next part is for a person who is a complete, who lives with either his laptop or tablet or smartphone, it's, <coughs> you don't have to make your diary public. You don't have to say, now I'm going from here to Hindustan University, or I'm out in the beach having a wonderful time, the waves are like this, or I'm in Bali having a fabulous time. Because when you're having a fabulous time in Bali, somebody else is having a fabulous time ransacking your home. It happens all the time. And they, it's, it's, I mean, it might sound very, very stupid, but if I was a criminal, believe me, this is the best thing in the world. I, I mean, I would just use it because, A, nobody knows who I am. I can threaten anyone I want. They don't know who I am. They don't know what I look like. And until I can use the, uh, go into any, <coughs> Uh, cyber cafe or I can access you through several other servers and come across. It's a wonderful world for a criminal and to stop them we need folks like you. Thank you.